Welcome to MLC TV News R, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adenoy. The headlines. Federal government set for locally made COVID-19 vaccine trial in November. National Association of Academic Technologists, NAT, suspends strike for three months. Angola's president, Joan Lorenko, set for second term. And on sports, Benzema wins UEFA Player of the Year award. Now the news in detail. President Muhammad Buhari has assured German-based mRNA vaccine manufacturer BioNTech of Nigeria's readiness to collaborate towards the local production of vaccines. President Buhari made the promise when he met with the executive chairman of Kenop Foundation and representative of the chief executive officer of BioNTech. The mRNA vaccine patent holder in Africa, Holm Keller at the State House Abuja. The president said he looked forward to receiving a commitment from the company to expand collaboration to achieve Nigeria's goal of developing capacities for research, development, and manufacturing. The COVID-19 vaccine developed by the federal government is set for trial by November. It was reported that the project, which is a mega research grant intervention, tagged accelerated development of COVID-19 vaccine using innovative technological approach, is a collaborative effort involving cluster researchers from five different institutions to consolidate problem-solving research and promote innovation in the country. The Vice Chancellor, Usman Danfodio University, Sokoto, Professor Lawal Bilblis, who led the team of researchers to brief the executive secretary of TED Fund, Sonny Echono, on the progress so far, explained that they were able to make the breakthrough through the maximum support of the fund. A presentation by Bashir Bello of Yusman Danfodio University, Sakoto, revealed that it had become a matter of urgency for Africa to join the rest of the world in the production of its own vaccine, as it was estimated that the continent currently imports 99% of its vaccine and consumes 25% of globally made vaccine. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund had earlier awarded a total of 1.25 billion naira to four clusters of researchers. One of the clusters, which is the Vaccine Production Cluster, VPC, got a total grant of 450 million naira. VPC is made up of researchers from the National Veterinary Research Institute, VOM, Yusman Danfodio University, Sakoto, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, University of Jos, Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, Lagos, and National Research Institute for Chemical Technology, Zaria. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has suspended the revocation of licenses of broadcast stations who have failed to renew them. NBC Director General Balabare Shehu Ilela made this known in a statement. NBC on Friday, August 19, 2022, issued a shutdown notice to licensee that are indebted to the commission. Following the ultimatum, the commission received positive responses from the debt licensees, including big players in the broadcast industry. Balabari said the commission decided to suspend the shutdown of the indebted broadcast stations all over the country for the meantime, sequel to a follow-up meeting held with executives of the Broadcast Organizations of Nigeria, BON, and other critical stakeholders in the industry. He expressed appreciation to BON the affected licensees and broadcast stakeholders for their responses and interventions. The NBC Director General pointed out that the Commission is not unaware of the difficulties caused by the shutdown, stressing that the Commission will always operate within the National Broadcasting Commission of the National Broadcasting Commission Act Cap N11 Law of the Federation 2004. Lagos State Government says it has presented an abstraction license, borehole permit, and water treatment plant certification to Eco Hotels and Suits Limited for the year 2022 after it satisfied it to have fully complied with the state's regulatory provision. The Executive Secretary of Lagos State Water Regulatory Commission, Fonke Adepoju, stated this during the presentation of the license and permit to the management of the hotel at the Commission's headquarters office. Alausa Ikeja. 
Adepoju explained that the commission in its regulatory role issued drilling license to commercial borehole, water drillers and practitioners water abstraction license as a form of regulation for the groundwater management, given their environment impact and the health of the residents. She said the official presentation of the license is in recognition of the regulatory compliance of the state's guidelines on the regulation of groundwater and delivery of water, sanitation and hygiene services. In his response, the legal advisor of Eco Hotels and Suits Limited, Samuel Alabi, said the resistance put up by some stakeholders against the regulatory efforts of the state government was due to ignorance. Ogun State Governor Prince Dapo Abiodun has appealed to the federal government and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, to immediately resolve their differences and put an end to the ongoing ASU strike in the interest of not only the student, but the entire nation. Governor Abiodun, who made the plea while inaugurating the board of the state-owned tertiary institutions, said education remained the biggest industry in the gateway state. While asking the striking lecturers and the federal government to sheet the assault and put an end to the impasse, he noted that the overall interest of the nation should be paramount in order not to put the biggest industry in jeopardy. The governor explained that with the inauguration of the boards of the tertiary institutions, his administration is celebrating the proud legacy of education bequeathed on the state by its early torchbearers in the sector. He recalled the giant strides of people like Chief Obafemi Awolowo, Professor Wole Shoinka, Dr. Tai Solari, Professor Adeoye Lambo, Anthony Asiwaju, Akin Mabogunje, and Theophilos Ogulesi, among several others. The boards inaugurated are those of the Olabisi Onobanjo University, Agoiwoye, Tai Solari University of Education, Ijagun Ijebode, Moshud Abiola Polytechnic, Ojere, Abeokuta, Ogun State Institute of Technology, Igbesha, Gateway Polytechnic, Sakwade, among others. The National Association of Academic Technologists said it has suspended its 158-day-old strike for three months to allow the government time to conclude negotiation and implementation of NAT's demands. NAT had embarked on the strike to push home its lingering demands like other tertiary institution-based unions. But the union's president, Ibeji Wokoma, while addressing journalists in Abuja, said the suspension of the strike would last for three months. He said NAT rejected the position of the government on no work, no pay, and demanded that their withheld salaries be paid without delay, noting that its union has followed all laid-down rules before embarking on strike. NAT, however, implored the Minister of Education to plea with the federal government on passionate ground to pay the August 2022 salaries of members of NAT immediately the strike is suspended. We go on a short break. We'll be right back. Announcement, 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 announcement. Conference University of Science and Technology, Costec, Osara. Commencement of 2022-2023 admission exercise. The Confluence University of Science and Technology, Costec, Osara, a university wholly owned by Kogi State, is currently in session and has commenced the process of admission into all the programs of the university approved by the National Universities Commission, NUC, for the 2022-2023 academic session. The programs, which are fully available on the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, platform for admissions, are as follows. Faculty of Science, Applied Geophysics, Biology, Biochemistry, Chemistry, Geology, Mathematics, Microbiology, Physics, Statistics. Faculty of Computing and Informatics, Computer Science, Cyber Security, Software Engineering, Information Technology. Faculty of Engineering, Chemical Engineering, Civil Engineering, Computer Engineering, Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, Mining Engineering. All the programs are available for both UTME and direct entry candidates. What a prospective candidate should do. Candidates should normally have selected Costec as university of first choice, 
However, a candidate who wishes to switch to the university should effect the change on the JAM portal and select Confluence University of Science and Technology, or SARA, as university of first choice. The candidate should select the desired program for which he or she has the requisite UTME subject combination and relevant O-level results. Candidates should ensure that his or her O-level results are successfully uploaded on the JAM portal for admissions. Any candidate whose results are not uploaded will not be available on JAM's Central Admission Processing System CAPS for admission processing. Candidates should proceed to the university website www.costec.edu.ng or click this link bit.ly costec admissions to upload his or her details for post UTME screening again. The candidate should ensure that he or she has the right UTME subject combination and at least five credits in relevant all level subjects including English language and mathematics. As required for the program selected, the registration is free. For further information, forward your inquiry to admissions at costec.edu.edu.ng. Sign Olufunke Hudson, Registrar. The second Global Miracle Faith Seminar which the Healing School organizes holds this weekend. According to the media head of the school, the seminar will feature Bible teachings, moment of worship, and testimonies from those who have experienced God's healing power in the school events and the Healing Stream Live Healing Service with Pastor Chris. Welcome back. The Nigerian Post newspaper has organized her 2022 annual lecture and impact series and award ceremony. The program with the theme, Governance and Leadership Redefined, This House Must Not Fall, attracted dignitaries from all walks of life to the venue of the event. The Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ Press Center, Lokoja, Kogi State Capital. Insecurity, economic meltdown, and poor infrastructure are some of the challenges faced by Nigerians and those forms part of the discussions. The circumstances the discussions say needs urgent attention. Our reporter, Matthias Ayodeji Peter, has more. Nigeria is a house. With or without doubt, we are in a transition. We are in a period of electioneering. And as we speak, politicians are jostling for power for the electorate, it is a clarion call that only leaders who will represent you and provide good governance should be your focus. And for the leaders, we are saying, please, while you just look for quest for power, as much as you do it by action or inaction, you must not pull down the house, either the Nigeria House or the Kogi State House. What is paramount in our choice is competence, capacity, and ability to deliver the dividend of uh, democracy, which is what the ordinary Nigerian is asking for. The annual event is to commemorate the creation of Kogi State and celebrate it at 31st. The chairman of the occasion, former Minister for State Labor and Productivity, Professor Stephen Ocheni, said leaders need to be effective to harness all state human and mineral resources. The place of good governance and redefining leadership has been opined by many as critical in the socioeconomic development of any society, just like I said earlier. Let me state that citizens are yearning for good governance, reasons why leaders who will be presenting themselves for election to, in the incoming elections to various offices must come to terms with the huge expectations of the people they intend to represent. They need to therefore advocate for leadership that is focused with capacity to be our greatest priority moving forward. 
why democracy presents us the opportunity to elect leaders. I want to use this medium to tax citizens and political actors that this must be done within the confines of the provisions of the Nigerian Constitution so that the House, what does this House mean now? Nigeria and Kogi State must not fall. It's a democracy is a system that allows the people to elect their leaders. Ucheni urged the people to join forces with the government to fight insurgency. Chairman Jamatu Nasri Islam, Ambassador Usman Belo, commended the organizer of the lecture tagged Governance Leadership Redefined. The house must not fall. I pray that they continue to do their very best to strengthen Nigeria's foundation so that we can grow stronger, that we can meet the earnings of the citizenry and you know be counted in whatever we do to make Nigeria in you know, a great. The Vice Chancellor of Federal University Lokoja, Professor Olayemi Akemomi, said Nigeria has all it takes to be great. I want to appeal to us today that for this house not to fall, in anything we do, we must not use religion to destroy this house. We must not use ethnicity to destroy this house. Uh, we must not use politics to destroy this house. And as the editor-in-chief said, there are some certain issues. We are talking about leadership. Nigeria is at a crossroad now. I think we should just look inward and see those who are ready to satisfy us, those who will take Nigeria to the next level. Nigeria, what is happening in Nigeria today is not, is not peculiar to us. Other countries have gone through the same process. But they have been able to overcome their own. And this is the time for us to also overcome the problems we are going to. Other keynote speakers are the federal representative representing Yaba East West Mopamuro constituency, Leke Abejide, represented by his chief of staff, Adibola Samuel, and the House of Representative member representing Lokoja Kogi federal constituency, Barrister Shaba Ibrahim, spoke on way forward for Kogi state, especially how the security of lives and property can be improved. The truth is bitter, but it must be told. Security. I've heard people talk about security. Security in the state and everything. Alhamdulillah, I can, because I've personally engaged His Excellency Alaji Abelo on the issue of security, I know that he has done quite a lot, and I commend him for that. But you see, within the larger confines, within the Nigerian state, can we honestly say we're secured? It takes a lot of courage to travel by road in this country today. The security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. In the course of my sojourn in the House of Representatives, I've had cause to visit some West African countries, including but not limited to Chad, Niger, Cameroon, and so forth and so on. Let me tell you that between Chad and Nigeria alone, there are some 83 illegal roads. Between Chad and Nigeria. 83. We need to upgrade. We need to walk away from manual thinking and manual ways of doing things. Otherwise, we will continue to grow up in the dark. People have since left this. When you talk about security, the first thing people think about is go and acquire heloxes and stuff like that and be pursuing criminals. The world has since moved on from that, 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 that point. What is wrong with getting technology involved, drones. In the final analysis, they come cheaper. I'm saying this because if not that we're secured, gathering here will even be a problem. Is that correct? So I am stressing on security because we need to appreciate the fact that no matter how much you grow, and you're not even going to grow without security, but no matter how much you grow, it will be frittered away if we are not all secured. These states, we are very rich enough in terms of human resources. We have the young ones that are very brilliant and willing to do. We are happy that this administration, at least there are areas we can copy and say, yes, you have done very well. All other ones that are coming, so please build on those things. We need to rechannel our policies towards making the masses to be happy a bit. Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Wemi Jones, represented by Annie Mokun Elizabeth, 
and the chief of staff to the Kogi State Governor, Abdul Karim Mohamed Jamil, represented by Sandra Mimi, both read out the transformation that has taken place under the leadership of Governor Yaya Belu to mark Kogi at 31st. His Excellency has made notable impacts in the education sector from basic to tertiary education levels. For lack of time, permit me to mention just a few. Some of the achievements are full accreditation of courses for all state-owned tertiary educational institutions. For the first time in the history of the state since its establishment in 1991, Kogi State Education Law 2022 was signed into law by His Excellency Al Haji Ayabelo <laughs> to ensure quality assurance in the education service delivery. Three, establishment of Confluence University of Science and Technology, COSTEC Osara, in 2020, at the peak of the COVID 19 pandemic and nationwide global lockdown. The institution aims at producing graduates in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, that will meet the technological needs of the state with a huge mineral deposit. He stepped up Operation Total Freedom, brought state-of-art security gadgets, launched Kogi State Vigilante Service, and empowered security agencies to combat crime. Insecurity is the absence of peace, and, and an unsecured house is disorganized. And the metaphor used in the quote, this house must not fall, refers to unity. If we are together, we are conquering security, and today we enjoy relative peace in the state. A saying that goes, a house rat that tells a bush rat where the fish is kept in the kitchen. If we remain together, we cannot allow outsiders to bring terror to us. Today, the governor, Yaya Belo, redefined governance, leadership, in providing adequate security in the state by enhancing the quality of lives of the citizens of Kogi State by unrelenting security acts. His effort against insecurity has brought crime rate in the state to its barest minimum making Kogi State a safe haven for settlers, investors, connecting bridges between the north and the southern region of a great nation, Nigeria. On health, numerous infrastructures have been set up and still being set up. We have the re reference hospital, Kene, Modern General Hospital Project, Gegu, Modern General Hospital Project, Inegai, Modern General Hospital Project in Isonlu, reconstruction and renovation of Specialist Hospital, Lokoja, ETC. On economy, the economy, the administration of His Excellency Al Haji Ayabelo focused on agriculture as a strategist built out for recession. We have found ourselves, apart from the distribution of farm implements, and agroeconomic, the second largest rice mill in northern Nigeria was established by his administration. The mill has taken thousands of the streets and boosted the economy. Other prominent personalities that spoke are traditional rulers who commended the organizer. A lecturer at the State Polytechnic Lokoja and the guest speaker at the event, Joel Temitope, stressed the need for proactive, dynamic and redefined governance through resilience leadership at the federal, state and family levels towards ensuring the nation stands strong. Society starts from the family. The family is the most smallest level of, gov of, of, of governance in Nigeria. Parents are into governance. And parents also must ensure that children are raised up to become responsible citizens. Joel pointed out that Nigeria is currently in need of responsible, purposeful, patriotic and decisive leadership to build Nigeria of our dream. We must redirect governance back to capture the needs of the average Nigerian, the citizens that we have in the country called um, Nigeria. So our nation state at the post-colonial era has to face this challenge, this obvious challenge that there must be a redefinition there must be. And right now, if we look at the state of things at the federal level, there are challenges at the federal level. ASU has been on strike for six months. 
our children are at home for six months. And these are challenges of governance in Nigeria. There's need for redirection. We can't continue this way. Kogi State Governor Yaya Adoza Belu, represented by the State Commissioner for Information and Communications, Kinsley Fanwo, while speaking at the event, noted that for the nation not to fall, all hands must be on deck. We must report Nigeria for Nigeria. It is what we call our nation. It is what we call our states that people will call it for us. And in my place, they said if you sell your father for one naira, you won't be able to buy him back for 10 naira. So as journalists, let us dwell on the positives and also constructively spark and provoke the change that our society desire from time to time. Do not let us spread panic because I will not speak for the federal government of Nigeria but I will speak for the state of Kogi. In Kogi, we are not 100% secured. The difference between us and others is that why some will say kidnappers and bandits have taken 85% of my state and rushed to Abuja, we stay here to deal with the situation. We stay here to deal with the criminals. We stay here to be able to change the narrative. And that is exactly what we are doing different. He charged the media practitioners to sustain the ethics of the profession and desist from engaging in reports that can instigate or cause disaffection. The publisher of the Nigerian Post newspaper, Mike Abu, said he chose the theme of the event, governance and leadership redefined, the house must not fall, to serve as a call on all Nigerians to rise to current challenges and change the narratives for good. Matthias IODG Peter reporting for MLC TV. Kogi State Government has paid a courtesy visit to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, at the command's office in Lokoja. The Commissioner for Information and Communication, Kingsley Fangwo, commended the state commander of NDLEA, Abdullahi Abdukadil Fakai, for his doggedness to fight against drug abuse and illicit drug in the state. A reporter has more. According to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, recent statistics have revealed that 40% of Nigerian youth between 18 and 35 years are deeply involved in the abuse of drugs. In 2021, around 275 million people used drugs worldwide, while over 36 million people suffered from drug use disorders, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, lamented. The organization said, drug use was responsible for the death of almost half a million people in 2019. The commander of the NDLEA, Kogi State Command, Abdullahi Abdukadir Fakai, commended the fight put up by the state government to halt illicit drugs in the state, but urged the people to join them to support the youth from taking drugs which have contributed to security threats and miscreants in society. Fakai said, to cleanse this menace, it has to be an all-round war against drugs abuse. Drug is the catalyst for which most vices, most vices are committed. Wherever you see drug, you will see crime. Wherever you see crime, you will see drug. That is why all of us must come together. The fight against drug abuse and drug menace should not be left in the hand of government alone. Should not be left in the hand of the agency alone. All of us must come together. As parents, as parents, we have a social contract with our children, with God that created us to train our children. When you train your child to desist from drug, you are not just helping your family, you are helping the society in general. Because like I said, this banditry that we hear today, this kidnapping, cultism, 
is not done with clear eye. People who engage, you find that they are under one substance or another. He called for individuals volunteering to carry the crusade to schools, churches, mosques and market squares, saying it is worrisome for those who cultivate even cannabis sativa and claim to be doing legitimate business. Meanwhile, 11 million users are already confirmed in Nigeria, a third of whom seems to be regular users with a need for drug counseling. Fakai said lower perception of the danger drug users are exposed to is responsible for the increase in the risk and have been linked to increasing in crimes. He called on the government to support the agency to fight this evil that is taking over the youths through proper counseling to close the gap between perception and reality by educating young people and safeguarding public health. Of recent, NAVDA was in the campaign against what is called Kuskura. I don't know if you have heard that one. One of the problems that we have, and that is why parents are the first institution, the first agency, the first police to the children. Because the substances that we are talking about may not necessarily be cocaine, heroin, and cannabis. There are other substances that are unconventional. That are uncom it is only the user that identifies what would give him the high that he requires. So that is why I say the parents must also be the first police, the first agency, the first uh, uh, religious leader, the, the, the first person to monitor and train his child. Sensation is key. People must understand what we are saying. A lot don't. I don't think. But you are saying something that encourages thieving. Because they don't know the effect it does to the individual user and the community. So you must understand the danger of drug abuse. Talk to your parents, talk to your words, talk to your colleagues in office. Drug is no good. Recently, the NDLEA boss said they have stations that through their efforts have been able to reduce the inflow of drugs through Kogi State to other states in the country. The Commissioner for Information and Communications commended the command and the commander, saying the government will continue to partner with them to provide regular orientation and counseling to the majority of drug users and the general public through the government and private media in the state. A serious war that we must win. And we are not leaving the war to the NDLEA alone because it is not, it is not the NDLEA that suffer the consequences of drug abuse, our people do in the villages, in cities, in towns, across the state. So we must rise to the occasion as a government to enlighten our people, to sensitize them. And I can assure you that the State Ministry of Information and Communications will work closely with you to achieve this. Commissioner for Information was joined by the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor on Electronic Media and Public Relations. Avoy Ungogo and Shegun Abiraro, including directors from the Ministry of Information. Khadijat Mohammed, reporting for MLC TV. Kogi State Government, through the Office of the Commissioner for Information and Communication, made an advocacy visit to the Office of the Commandant of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, in Lokoja. The Commissioner, Kingsley Fanwo, said the government visited the State Commandant. Oyin Loye, John Kayode, to ensure the NSCDC further strengthen the effort at curbing cases of vandalism in the state. The state is currently putting in place a lot of infrastructure. Part of the problems we've had in the past is the need for us to repeat installation of infrastructure because of vandalism. Within the local Township, you will discover that most of the streetlights 
have been vandalized. This is so because even the people for whom this infrastructure are provided do not see the reason to protect the infrastructure that are put in place to serve them. That is the reason we have come to form a partnership with NCDC at the level of our ministry on behalf of the government of Kogi State so that we can properly sensitize our people on what they need to do. He assured the commandant of Governor Abelou's administration collaboration and commended the commandant and commended the command for their efforts. Let me on behalf of the governor and the government of Kogi State commend you for the tremendous achievements of NSCDC in protecting our people, in protecting our properties in the state. Thank you and God bless you. He encouraged the command to ensure all state infrastructures are well protected from vandals. The commandant, NSCDC, Kogi Command, Oyiloye John Kayode, appreciated Governor Belu for providing the enabling environment they have enjoyed to fight crime and criminality in the state. That uh, securing some of these assets of the government within the metropolis and around the headquarters, we assure you that uh, we will have a better discussion on this and uh, we will be able to mark out the strategy and plans in order to safeguard all these critical infrastructures. Among his entourage are the senior special assistants, electronic media, Avoy Nwogu, and public relations, Shegun Abereoro, and some directors of the Ministry of Information. Kogi State Governor Yahya Belu has congratulated former governor of the state, Captain Idris Ichalawada, on his 72nd birthday anniversary, describing him as a man of peace with progressive conscience. Governor Bello's message was contained in a press statement signed by his chief press secretary, Mohamed Onogu. The governor congratulated Captain Idris Wada for witnessing another milestone in good health, noting that the former governor and now elder statesman, while serving in public office as the governor, played his part in fronting the ideas of the desired Kogi state. He added that notwithstanding their differences in political party, Captain Wada has continued to render support and counsel for his administration while extending his arm of fellowship in the overall interest of the state. Governor Bello expressed confidence that the former governor's legacy of peace and mutual understanding will continue to chart the course for a smoother relationship which would further affirm his administration's policies of friendship across ethnic, religion, and even party line. While praying for long life and good health for the celebrant, Governor Bello noted that the astute politician and revered humanitarian would continue to play a vital leadership role for the younger generation by living a life of selfless service and devotion to God. Captain Idris Ichalawada was the former governor of Kogi State between 2011 and 2015. As Kogi State marks her 31 years of existence, the people of the state, both at home and in the diaspora, have been called upon to contribute their quota to the development of the state. The provost, Kogi State College of Nursing and Midwifery, Obangede, Hannah Ojohu Abraham, made the call in a felicitation message made available to the press by the information officer of the institution, Binta Sedik Oiza. Hannah Ojohu explained that the course of development requires the contributions of all and sundry, describing Kogi State as a blessed state. She said individuals can contribute to the growth of the state in the areas of partnership with the government, scholarship, empowerment programs, creating job opportunities for the youth, setting up private company in the state, among others. The provost commended past handlers of the state for their contributions during their tenure, describing Kogi State as a force to be reckoned with nationwide. Anna Abraham appreciated the incumbent state governor, Yahya Bello, for his doggedness, commitment, foresight, and proactive spirit towards ensuring the progress of the state since his assumption of office. The provost said the handwritings of the developmental strides of Governor Bello is boldly written for even the blind to see in various sectors, ranging from education, agriculture, 
infrastructure, civil service reform, youth development, among others. She appreciated Governor Bello for his Midas touch on the Kogi State College of Nursing and Midwifery, or Bangede, stressing that the governor's effort has given the institution a facelift among her counterparts. The provost also enjoined the people of the state to remain united, law-abiding, and continue to be their brother's keeper. And on the foreign scene, fewer than half of Angola's registered voters cast ballots in this week's election that looks set to extend the Marxist People's Movement for the liberation of Angola. MPL is almost five decades in power. Despite the MPLA's expected success, the West this vote was Angola's most closely fought, yet with unprecedented gains for the opposition who have complained about the counting process. With more than 97% of votes counted, the Election Commission said the formerly MPLA party was ahead with 51% majority and its longtime opponent, the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, had 44.5%. If that breakdown holds, the MPLA president, Joan Lurenko, will secure a second five-year term, extending his party's uninterrupted rule since independence from Portugal in 1975. But UNITA, for the first time, will have deprived the MPLA of the two-third majority needed to pass majority reforms, and the ruling party will instead need the backing of other lawmakers. Election data released on Friday also showed that turnout was just 45.65% of eligible voters. And on sports, let's join Jonah Malik. And on sports updates, former England player of Nigeria descent John Fashionu is set to receive an honorary award 34 years after guiding FC Wimbledon to their FA Cup trial. Fashionu was part of the crazy gang Wimbledon side that shocked Liverpool to win the 1988 FA Cup. But even though they were an established first division side at that time, few gave them a chance going into the final against one of the greatest teams in England. In celebration of the 1988 team, Wembledon before the kickoff of Saturday's League 2 game against Barrow with Honor Fashionu and the other players. In response from England, the 59-year-old said it is a great honor that he has been invited with his family to receive the honorary award. Still on sports, Karim Benzema was rewarded for outstanding season by winning the UEFA Men's Player of the Year prize at the ceremony in Istanbul on Thursday. France striker Karim Benzema captain Real Madrid to victory over Liverpool in the UEFA Champions League final and scored 15 goals in the competition. Karim Benzema took the men's honour ahead of club teammates Tuboa Kotwa and Manchester City midfielder Kevin De Bruyne succeeding Chelsea midfielder Jorginho who won the award last year. Carlo Ancelotti was named best men's coach for his success with Real Madrid, with Dutch woman Serena Wigman crowned best women coach after leading England to Euro glory on home soil last month. Bayern Munich were placed in the same section as Barcelona in Thursday's draw for the UEFA Champions League group stage in Istanbul, while Helen Haaland will face his former club as Manchester City reappeared with Borussia Dortmund. Bayern Munich and Barcelona will also come up against Inter Milan in Group C, which is completed by the Zerch champions, Victoria Pleasant. But Russia Dortmund, Manchester City side will also face Sevilla and Danish champion FC Copenhagen in Group G. Last season's finalists, Liverpool will play Ajax, Napoli and Rangers in Group A. While reigning champions, Real Madrid will face Celtic as well as RB Leipzig and Shakhtar Donetsk in Group F. Meanwhile, Paris Saint-Germain will meet up with Juventus as well as Benfica and Israeli champions Maccabi Haifa in Group H. Chelsea winners in 2021 UEFA Champions League will take on Serie A champion AC Milan as well as Red Bull Salzburg and Dynamo Zagreb in Group E. While Tottenham Hotspur will face last season's Europa League winners entrance Frankfurt alongside Sporting Lisbon and Olympic Marcel in Group D. 
FC Porto won Atletico Madrid meet for the second season running in Group B, which also featured Bayern Leverkusen and Belgian champion Club Rouge. This season's group stage will begin with the first round of the game on September 6 and 7. All the group stage matches will finish before the World Cup begins in November 20th. And that's sports update on MLC TV News. I am Malik Jonah reporting. Back to Acasta for more stories. Thanks for the update, Jonah. On Entertainment Desk, Matthias Ayodeji takes it from here. On our foreign entertainment news, celebrities, friends and family of music entrepreneur Jamal Edwards held a party in South East London to celebrate his life on what would have been his 32nd birthday. His mother, Brenda Edwards, described the 12-hour celebration as a mega cook-up, and he drew appearances from Ed Sheeran and Big Nasty, as well as countless others whom Jamal has helped. As a teenager, he created the online platform SBTV, which helped launch the careers of Jesse J and Stormzy. Edwards was awarded an MBE for his services to music in 2014, but died in February. Crossing over to Africa, following the successful events from the release of his wide accepted song, Buga, he sold out UK and US tours and other sold out tours in selected countries in Africa. Kiss Daniel continues to wow African audiences on his 2022 Afro Classic tour. In the latest leg of his tour, the Afrobeat megastar trailed over 80,000 energetic fans in Kutono, Benin Republic. They played their Fridozi Park in Benin Republic's capital, Kutono, played host to the massively talented artist who didn't stand on ceremony when he trailed over 80,000 excited fans who, amid the lockdown and heavy traffic in the city, pulled out all the stops to listen to Kizdani perform the biggest song on the continent. Kiz trilled the fans with a choice selection of some of his classic hits, including Woju, Lie, Lie, Pour Me Water, Buga, and so many more. Kizdani is one of Africa's oldest artists of 2022, with his hit single, Buga, enjoying an intercontinental success that has made it to the biggest African single of 2022. And that is all in entertainment news today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Back to Acasta for more stories. A three-story building under construction in Kubwa area of Abuja has collapsed with workers trapped. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, disclosed that the incident happened at midnight on Thursday. According to the information gathered, the officials of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, have commenced rescue operation at the scene. The number of persons trapped in the building or who suffered casualty will be confirmed and read in our next bulletin. And that's the size of our package for today. Join us tomorrow at this same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter, at MLC TV 1. For your event coverage, Information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join us Friday and Saturday to watch our special programs. It's Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Joshua Adenoy. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Good day and thanks for watching.